Welcome back to YouTube. Two to UK. Channel update. In the fucking blast furnace. It's stupid, stupid weather. It's doing my head in. It's 36 degrees nearly. And it's half past four. It's Friday. I thought I'll do this. I won't do it tomorrow, Saturday, because Saturday the weather's due to be a lot warmer, a lot hotter. Um, today, I think this morning, it was, it was fucking like near enough thunderstorms and now it's this blistering heat. I don't mind it, just do one thing or the other. Stick to it. Stop, I can't handle this chopping and changing. My body can't adjust quick enough in it. Well, this room can't adjust quick enough and I can't adjust quick enough. I think I've become one with the blast furnace. It's like the Stockholm Syndrome. You know when you start um, finding an affinity with your, with your captive? It's the same with this room. I feel it's pain, man. Fucking The salter. Fried brains. We're talking absolute fucking cod wallop. Anyway, what we've got here, we've got some um, Facebook. We've got uh, some general pickups from a fellow tuber, fellow friend. And we've got a bit about the Birmingham gaming market. Oh, fucking hell. Um, that was in Digbeth last week. Um, so, yeah. Shouldn't be too long, but you never know with me. I was talking completely. Well, the way my brain's at the minute, it's not. It's non-functional. Mm. Sun's gone in. Thank God for that. Give it a bloody rest of five minutes. Right. So to kick it off, I'm going to do um, a purchase from a fellow tuber, a good friend of mine, very good friend of mine. Um, he's been given his orders from his missus, so he's not his own man anymore. He's been henpecked to death. He had this up at Doncaster. I was very interested in it, um, but I weren't stalling that at Donny. You know, I had a few bits on people's stalls that were just going to pay for a couple of the games if, if I bought anything. Um, and yeah, I just didn't have the funds. He ended up not selling it. Contact me, said, are you still interested? I said, yes. He did me a good payment plan, de deal, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I managed to square up with him now. And it is from the mighty Mark from Burnout Culture. It is his Megatron 16-bit Genesis slash Mega Drive Transformer. Wonderful little item this is. There was a um, Optimus Prime one. Can you see that? I'll show you the back, the back will be better. But it's all there, I mean, I think it has been opened. Lovely Japanese decals there. Um, there was um, a PlayStation Optimus Prime one of these as well that was released. Uh, you know, I might toy getting all getting of that. At the right price, you know, I'm not, I've not got a massive affinity towards Transformers per se. You know, I don't sort of go out my way to collect Transformers. I do enjoy and I do watch quite a lot of Transformer uh, related videos on YouTube from different people. As bizarre as that sounds. But I watch a lot of toy stuff. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a hobby or a sort of collection collecting hobby, where's that tape gone? Um, so I put it back in a nice little bag just to keep it, keep all the dust off, stop the edges getting worn too much. Um, but the toy stuff, yeah, I just like, I like the fact that I'm looking at it, but I don't, I like the fact that I don't necessarily have the, have the urge to own it all. Um, but little crossover pieces like that I don't mind too much. I have no idea where I'm going to put it. Um, Mark had to sell it because he, he's basically said it's taken up too much space, which I find it hard to believe in this room. I just think he's had his orders and he's not his own man anymore. But anyway, either way, it's now mine. <laughs> and that's come, <laughs> that's, is it the third person, second person I know, because obviously that was from Scott Brand. Um, so it's gone to a good home, you know, it probably it will never leave here, let's be honest. There's very, very little comes in here that ever goes out in terms of what I'm keeping for the collection. So, uh, and you never know. Once this fictitious room, I'm getting a lot of fucking John Hancock, can I, with the museum. When I get my gaming room, and it's every year it just gets pushed back and pushed back. It is on the cards, honestly. I shit you not, it is on the cards. It's just, it's just the timing. The timing's got to be right. And fingers crossed. Um, I think I might have mentioned this before, I don't know, but um, the house on the opposite corner, um, on the bend, on the, on the road, they've had an extension built above the garage. And as that's gone up, I think the wife might have changed her tune. So fingers crossed, we may be going above the garage, as well as the garage. So fingers crossed, 
it may, I may get the room that I've regionally really after to be honest. Um, so yeah, items like that and all the other shit that I've got, I've rabbit on about numerous of the times. Will hopefully, be able to come out and see the light of day because that's going to go into the, that's going to go into a box and it's going to go into the carriage. So it ain't going to get sun faded, it ain't going to get damaged or anything like that. It's just hoarding. It's just hoarding with an under another name, another pseudonym called collecting. Um, but many thanks to Mark. Really looked after me. Like I said, did me a great payment plan um, because you know no one's unless you're rolling in it. Like we make Mad Murdoch, old two ovens, briefcase. Um, then some of us have to sort of budget and wheel and deal. Bloody Nora. Right. Um, I do. I talk about Birmingham at the end because I've got some other bits and bobs here. So what I'll do from the disc come today, I was expecting some else to turn up, and the postman just hasn't been today at all, which is really unusual. Um, so I'm expecting something in the uh, through in the post from um, Galaxy Sega, which would be a really nice piece, um, but alas, it was not. I bet if I wait till tomorrow, it probably would come tomorrow, but. Fuck it, we'll wait till the next video. But off of Facebook, I think it was off Galaxy Sega as well, but the chaps, you know who this guy is. <laughs> He's on most of the groups. It's from Mark Jowett, um, the magazine dealer. Not those kind of magazines, unfortunately not, no. He does deal in vintage magazines, but again, not those magazines. What's it? Oh, Bit Ed, The Full Bush. Eh? You can't beat The Full Bush. But no, alas, it is not uh, vintage magazines of them Razzle Dazzle or Escort. It is it's just as, uh, I think it's named Sagan Mags. But he deals in all kinds of magazines, video game related magazines. Fuck me. Come on, you filthy bastards. Get your mind out of the gutter. Anyway, he had a, um, a couple of games up. It was, it was selling off. Uh, I don't know if they're duplicates or what, but there's one there. And honestly, the amount of times I looked at this at shows, and it's always missing the manual. Mine's missing the manual. Well, it was missing the manual. An absolute fucking cracking price. It, I think it was like £9 posted. I was like, I'll have that. So I only want it for the manual, but I'm having it. Um, and he very kindly said to me, I might have one or two magazines. You can pick a magazine, I'll chuck it in for free. What a fucking legend the guy is. Um, but the game in question, and I say CX don't carry this, so it is a, it can be a bit of a bugger. You have to go to you know eBay or the groups to find it. But I've got super skid marks, and I've got the game as well. Joking. Although in this heat, I probably have got to skip. No, that's just wrong. Uh, <laughs> toilet video. Super skid marks. Uh, Mega game, I do believe, because it's got that. Is it acid software? What did it? What game? Well, they did like another race, didn't they? I don't know if it's of the same ilk. Um, but yeah, but it has the fucking manual. Yes. Uh, I have to just check. See which. In I mean, the, the cartridge is fine. The only thing letting this down a little bit is just the box has got a chunk out of the bottom. But I said I only want it for the manual. So I've got, um, and I think I've got another decent box in the Codemasters box. Might be Psycho Pinball that I picked up. So I think Super Skid Marks is probably with a little bit more than Psycho Pinball. So I might swap that over. And I say it'll just be punted on at the next event. Yeah, if, if we can get half my money back for it, like a five or something, I'll be happy because I would have paid a fiver for the manual, uh, to be honest. But yeah, many thanks to Mark for that. But like I say, not only did he um, send me that, he sent me a picture of a few magazines. Because um, it's only really CVG meme machines that I'm collecting for now. Well, it is. And um, he had this really old CVG in really good condition. So another one to add, I definitely didn't. I said, I definitely haven't got this one. And he chucked it in for me. 85p, March 1984. Um, and it's, it's all going to be 8-bit stuff, isn't it? People were sort of saying to me about the last video, I should do flick throughs of the magazines. You know, I do watch them. I think you've got to be the right person to do them. Um, some people do them really well, and I've really enjoyed watching them. And some people are kind of like, I don't know. I think it's like anything in it. You've got to be investing in the person. I'm not sure I'm the right person to do these, to be honest. I don't know what you guys think. A few people sort of said it, but I was like, I don't think anyone will watch. Um, but this is really old. I mean, this is like, fucking, before, wow, look at that. Little spectrum printout. I mean, Christ, look at this. I mean, I would not have bought this in 1984. What would it have been? One years up? No, I wouldn't have been on 76. So it would have been eight years old. Yeah, I wouldn't have wouldn't have known about this at the time. I probably yeah, I wouldn't have had money to buy 
this. Oh, no. Wow. Bugs up. The bug squad and uh, there's uh, there's uh, look, we're on about uh, the other day. Anyway, so that's from Mark Jowett, Sagan Max. If you ever see him, if you ever see him at the events, or you see his name mentioned, you know, in like plans and stuff, go over and see him. It's fucking amazing deals on magazines, you know. Well, I know magazines aren't for, for everybody, um, but it does look like PlayStation stuff, so it's all the generational kind of stuff. So even if it, if the old shit, you know, the old paper, like I'm interested in, ain't your thing. Maybe the mid-range paper, like so the old PlayStation stuff. You see people going over there reminiscing, oh, I remember buying this one. There's a lot of nostalgia locked up in some of these magazines, and that's you'll, you'll never get that. So all these 360 people now, all these PS3 people, they won't have that. They've got no... That's a shame, isn't it, when you think about it like I didn't think of it. They've got no... Um, no medium to go back to. I mean, yeah, you got the internet, but they haven't got a physical medium that they can refer back to. So oh, I remember reading about that. I remember seeing that in this magazine, or well, that review, or whatever. That review was wrong. It's not. It's not happened. It's not going to happen. It never will happen. Shame that. So yeah, love. I, love, I do like. I do like uh, flicking through some of the old magazines. Right. Um, I grabbed this. Off of the Facebook group, uh, which I'm admin on, Retro Ram, the mighty Retro Ram, the one and only Retro Ram. Links down below. I can't get this open because my fingers are so fucking. <laughs> sweating that much, I can't even open it. There's a chap on there, Mikey, 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 Mikey Joe. I think it's Mike, Mike, Mikey Joe, Mikey somebody. Uh, he had a load of loose carts import stuff, um, mainly American, um, some pal, fortuitously enough for me, one Japanese, uh, what else did he have, he had something else, I tagged Alex on it, Nintendo Arcade, because I know he's, he's, he's now sort of, um, not admitted defeat, but I think he's realised maybe loose cart, this would suffice for his um, US um, SNES collection. But Mikey had one game, this is going back, over a week, um, and they had it for a really good price, really good price, uh, 28 quid, but I know this one is, is quite, it's one of these weird ones, it's quite heavily um, faked, uh, reproed, reproduction, I'm sweating everywhere now, and um, I said to the guy, I said, can I love a look at the board, and he said, yeah, sure, I'll send you some pictures. And then he sent me a picture of the cart close up. And I was like, where's the board? He goes, oh, I thought it had Phillips screwdrivers in it. Which I found a bit weird with a guy that had some really nice top end. I think he had some box Mega Man stuff. Did he have Mega Drive as well? Genesis? I can't remember. He had some nice stuff. And I, f and I sort of asked the question, because I have to, because I'm an admin. And, I, you know, when you sort of see things that are odd and out of place, you have to ask these questions. And um, he basically sort of said, look, I bought these years and years ago when obviously opening them up wasn't a thing, which is fine. And I sort of, I, he sort of said, how do you open up? I said, well, you need game bits. I said, it's worth buying both of them um, for, for the cost. It's just it's just a no-brainer. And they're useful for other things as well. And I thought that was the end of it. But to be fair to him, I went and bought them and he's opened the cart up and sent me the pictures of the board. And I was like, yeah, I'll take it. I did try and haggle. You've got to haggle a little bit. It's a 20, nice round 25 quid. He went biting. £28 for the cart, still a good deal. Um, More so now for me, because I have a boxed, a completing box Sparkster for Super Famicom. Um, so them that knows your Famicoms, well, no, this is one of them weird. And I think, now someone might be able to correct me. Um, although it's, it is, it's a treasure game, isn't it? It's a Konami title. Is this one of them weird Western ones that's more expensive because it was released in Japan, and I can't remember. So I'm sure Craig's here again told me something about this. And I could be talking complete and a, a bollocks. It might just be that it's a good game and everyone wants it. I can't. There's a reason why it's a, it's it's quite a bit more expensive than say like um, I mean Sparks on the, the, the SNES isn't cheap, but it's nowhere near this kind of value. And I can't remember the reason for it is. So all tell me. Um, but them that have been watching for a while, them that have got no absolutely no fucking life whatsoever, um, you boring bunch of bastards, get out more, stop watching this. Bit like, why don't you? 
don't watch this, watch that man. Um, well no, I picked up, God man, was it, sweat burning my eyes, two years ago? Bloody hell. I've sat on this for two years, maybe a year and a half. I picked up three um, Famicom titles. They're all com technically complete, but the carts were fake. But the boxes weren't. I think that was off the Facebook group because I picked up Barney, Captain Commando, Sparkstar, and Back to the Future. Um, so Back to the Future, I, I had the cart for, so I completed that. Um, Captain Commando, I, I got a nice copy of Craig, so I moved the box on, and I kept on with this. So you know, like I say, stuff comes in here, man. It don't go, it don't ever leave, and I can't get it out of the plastic cart because my finger keeps slipping on this because the heat, because he's got these. Because I've got the lock tops, I can't get it out. I can't grip the plastic. I can't, I can't grip the plastic. That's a gutchy, you bastard. Um, I see, you've seen this before. You've seen the box before. It's not. This, this was the best condition box as well, fully enough. Um, but it's definitely legit. I mean, you don't get. But just to show you, the cart's in lovely condition. So the one that come with it was, was fake, 100% fake. This one's got a bit of age, it's got a bit of patina to it, you can see it. Um, but yeah, I've checked the board and it's all legit. Well, I checked the board from the pictures, you know, sort of Googled it and stuff. And it shows up as sparks, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident it's, it's, it's fine. I mean, I'll never play it, so I'll, not that I'd even fucking know. <sighs> but uh, yeah, so I've pieced that together for, for peanuts. Obviously, the, you know, the cart being the most expensive, 28 quid, I don't know, maybe if I've rounded it off, because I sold the cart of this for like a, a, the, the fake one for a tenner, <laughs> you know, it just all adds up, and before you know it, it's probably cost me, what, like 40 quid, maybe for a complete box, and that's a £150 game, maybe, give or take. Okay, excuse me, the sun's gone in again. Right, Birmingham Gaming Market. So, a bit of a backstory, a bit of a backstory to, to, to this, because I think a lot of people get a bit confused with the um, the old markets and who does what and who's responsible for what and, and a bit, bit of confusion. So, I'll try as best I can to clear a few little things up. So, essentially, there's two main players, if that's the right word, in, in terms of the markets. You've got um, Gordon Bennett. You've got Steve Smith, who does the Super Retro Games Fairs, and they're predominantly in Leeds. So they're the ones you see at Leeds and the Collectorabilia and stuff like that. Then you've got the ones that are done by Replay Events, i.e. Andy Brown and his team or his company. Although Andy Brown doesn't do the markets, he lets Elliot organise them, but it's still essentially Replay Events. So he does the majority across the country now. So anything that's, that's video game market, is Andy Brown, so your Doncaster, your Bristol's, your London's, um, Glasgow doesn't have a gaming market does it, um, Norwich was a new one, um, so that's Andy Brown, Andy Brown's doing those, but him and his team, and I say Steve Smith, he's predominantly sort of leads, he has, he's basically his leads, um, for want of a better word, um, because I've seen Beth Bear's video and she called it, oh, I went to RetroCollect. RetroCollect were the ones that started off um, the first market in Leeds, funnily enough. Uh, and I think they moved from Leeds because it was it, it was way more, you know, successful than they figured. And they went to Doncaster. Steve Smith took that p plot, if you like, or that pitch in Leeds. So when they moved to Doncaster, it was called RetroCollect. Andy Brown then cottoned on to how successful they were and then bought the plot off Retro Collect, Adam, um, quarter eyes, and then has obviously taken up the chalice and ran with it since then. So that's kind of a rough idea because I know a lot of people are getting confused about who's doing what and who, who runs this and this, that, and the other. Because a lot of people were saying about the Birmingham one, it was too cramped and wise. And what you've got to remember is for um, when you're running these events, it's all overheads up front. You know, and they're 
they're sort of testing the water, I suppose is probably the best word, um, without um, putting themselves into the shit. Because obviously they don't know how busy it's going to be. We, even the vendors, obviously we have no idea. But trust me, I've been to one or two where it's it's not worked out. It's not panned out at all. <clears throat> so that's a little bit of a backstory, just in case. Because a few people are getting a little bit confused about stuff. Um, I've probably got a few bits wrong, to be honest. But in my head, that's how I kind of view it. They're, they're two separate entities, which which they are. Um, But I did notice. I think Dana, the mate Dana, put this out. They've dropped the um, they've dropped the video game bit off of it, so it's just um, uh, like you know, sort of the Birmingham gaming market. There's no video, so it, it kind of because obviously there's people selling other stuff like fucking pops, and not it's not like a, a toy show, but there's there's other merch there, you know. And I think it, it's I think maybe it's a conscientious marketing decision. I don't know. But they're no longer called video game markets, they're just called um, gaming, gaming markets. <sighs> right, that being said. <laughs> um, so this was a new one. Uh, you've seen, I was talked about Doncaster the week before. Obviously I didn't stall out there, I chose to do um, Birmingham. Rob and myself had always planned to do Birmingham. Um, I think as Doncaster got a bit closer, uh, Pete Old School and Rob were kind of like, I think Pete wanted to do an event, and I sort of said, well, I can organise it for you guys. I mean, I've talked about this before, just very briefly skirt over it. Uh, and that's why that's why I was there, and that's why they were there. <clears throat> but I was always geared up for Birmingham. So for me, the way I looked at it, again, from a seller's perspective, um, it was more of a case of, there's only so many, for me, with Doncaster. Doncaster is great, don't get me wrong, but as a seller, you're, um, you're selling to that same area that same region that same demographic demographic of people <clears throat> you know and, and to on what you're taking <clears throat> there's only so many playstations you can sell to one person or an n64 or a saturn or a gamecube before you saturate that market and i had this discussion with andy brown and he sort of said that's a good point um because i think they were doing three i think they've, they've curtailed it back to two now um because there's certain things that just weren't selling and when i've took those exact same things to birmingham last week they were selling and, it's, and I think it's just because you're tapping into a different market, almost like fresh meat. I know it sounds like it's a horrible term, but it is. It's fresh people that don't really know. And what I what I found really fascinating with Birmingham was um, the the maturity of the buyers, not in terms of their age or anything to do with that, but the maturity in terms of um, the stuff that they were looking at, the maturity in terms of like if they were collectors or not. Because you have, you know, like people like Craig here again with like some absolutely amazing import stuff but that is the maturity to to understand what he's selling is like fucking up here stuff that i was having which is all the duplicates and that was quite low in terms of the, the maturity is like ps1 ps2 that kind of stuff but people were buying it because it's what uh, they connected with it's what they remembered i mean the amount of people that picked up like tomb raiders and stuff like that, oh yeah i remember this and that's that's those people that what well, that's what i'm saying about the maturity of the of the sort of um not, all, not everybody, but you know, <clears throat> the bulk of people come in, um, and it and it's weirdly, really, uh, you know, I suppose if you looked at trends, and you, if you were that way inclined, that sort of much of an egghead, you could probably track it. You could probably, really, realistically, if you were that hardcore of a seller, you could you could probably really target certain markets depending on on the how how long they've been running in a certain area and what stock to take or what things to take. Um, because weirdly, you know, if I took a load of um, eight bit. Um, peripherals like joysticks and that didn't sell one, didn't sell one. But in Doncaster, every man and his dog was asking for them. So that's what we talk about the maturity of the of, of the people that are attending. Um, I know that uh, Crazy again sold, and a lot of people sold loads of Spectrum stuff, to, to, especially to some um, Russian guy. So if he'd been there, he would have fucking bought them joysticks. It's really it's fascinating to sort of see that um, how how the the, the the buying mind works in certain people in certain areas because I say it's the first time it's ever been there so some people did okay some people did great some people didn't do very well or not as well as expected um, I did fantastic really realistically given what I was what I took and uh, Rob did really well as well I think he was even surprised at the end of the day so I think he felt like he didn't really sound much but he obviously did I think Pete uh, old school did well as uh, also um, 
it wasn't the ideal venue. I didn't even realise we were in a canteen until someone else pointed it out. Because the plot that we had was like on a, on a, on a corner, but a setback corner. And it, obviously, it is fucking fantastic. I thought it was the best thing ever. We, all three of us did. It was like we had, which must have been um, like bench seating, race seating, that people sat and had the lunch at. But we used it as like shelving. It was brilliant. But I know there was a hall or a, is it a hall or a, a music thing. It's all black, and a lot of people were sort of, for want of a better word, crammed into that. And I think the gangways around it weren't sufficient. So you had this like. When people, because obviously I didn't see it, because obviously I was behind the stall, but as people described it, I likened it to when you've been to a car boot, and you know you get them people that the stalls are too close together, and you get people that go that will go past you, but literally they will go past you because they they're getting pushed by, pushed along by people, and they don't stop to look at anything, so they, they breeze past you because they can't stop and look. I say we didn't really have that much of a problem with that because opposite us was just a toilet, so there's plenty of space for people to skirt round. <clears throat> Which I think really helped. Um, it's just location, 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 unfortunately. Um, but definitely go again. Uh, you know, the people that were there, they're really, really polite. I didn't have no issues. Because um, I was a little bit concerned with it being Birmingham. <laughs> Not trying to be old, but I, I just didn't know what to expect. I think a few of us didn't really know what to expect, because I say it's all new. But a lot of them were sort of like, Again, I don't know Birmingham very well, but from what I've, what I've heard, because it was a student area, it was a sort of artsy, cultural side of it, and it's probably targeted to the right, right people, to be honest. And it, it's a, had a fantastic time. Dave fucking flew by, really did. Um, I'm not going to try and reel off too many names. I was going to say I'm not going to do a shout out, uh, because I say I wasn't really there for the socials, there for, to sell, um, but a few people I, I will mention. Um, first up, Tony and Martin, not Tony Martin, Tony and Martin, Tony Dylan I do believe is on Retro Round, I can't remember what Martin's last name is, uh, two local Brummie lads came over for some bizarre reason as well, they're mad, they must have no life, they watch me, but lovely to meet you guys and have a chat, uh, I know Pete got on really well, I had a really good bit of banter with, with Tony because I could see him hackling and chattering away up the top end, um, but I say always nice to see people that come and say hello. If I've got the time, you know, it's just sometimes that it's free deep, and it's hard to even go for a piss, let alone sit and stand and have a natter. But really good to see you guys. Uh, another chap that I've met for the first time again. He kind of watches, um, and he, he, I don't think he came up with, but he's from the same area as Rich King Retro. So we've seen Rich King Retro. Obviously, I've known Rich. For absolutely donkey's years an absolute legend on the tubes and and, and the guy in the flesh it's, it's just hilarious I had some really good nights out with rich um, had a good chat with him about where he's been and reasons why and they're his reasons and they're more than justified but hopefully you know he might he might come back at some point when things are different but he's got a lot on um in terms of what he wants to do and what he wants to achieve so but it's really good to see rich Right, there's another guy, and I didn't catch his bloody name, and he had some nice bits. He's pretty much similar to do what I do and what a lot of a lot of the sort of indie sellers do. Um, you know, he collects and he buys and he sells and trades. Now, all I'm going to refer to him as is the other guy in the corner who had Mac and X. Now, the only reason why I remember him for Mac and X is I know Rob needed it, and I was chatting to him about it, and then he sort of said something like, Blah, blah, blah. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, because I watch you. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, yeah. But he had some nice bit. He had a, a really eclectic mix, which I kind of like them stalls. And you can tell he's, he's not a proper, like, hardcore trader. He's just doing it to earn a, a few quid to buy more shit to add to his collection. I didn't catch it. You probably did say your name, and I'm, I'm, I'm just fucking breezed past me. But, um, yeah, it was in the corner, in the, the, the black sort of room. If you went through the door, he'd be in the top right-hand side there. Uh, but really not, I mean, like I say, a lot of these people, especially Paul and the other guy, uh, I spoke to them before doors opened, um, so it, it was really like a kind of flying visit, and I think I may have got round again towards the end. Um, but it was different at Birmingham because 
in Doncaster, it's, it always finishes at four, but at Doncaster, by two o'clock, it's pretty much dead, like as in proper dead. And I don't know if it's because of the size of it and the density of people have more sparse, so it looks like it's it's less empty. But Birmingham looked to or felt to me like it was still ticking over a little, like really slowly, but by still by about half past three. After that point, then it just it, it just nosedived. Um, but that, I said that might have just been deceptive in terms of the size. It's a smaller room, uh, as has been alluded to in other people's videos. Uh, spoke, speaking to Andy, and I think that yeah, they were kind of like yeah, this 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 will work. So obviously looking forward, it, it should be. And I don't know where the fucking alley is. He was pointed to it, and I was like, mate, you can point wherever you like. I don't, I don't know Birmingham, but the custard factory, which I'm. A, I'm um, reassuringly if, um, informed that it's like 100 yards down the road or something so apparently it hosts spans and stuff so it's a, it's a big old fucking place but yeah I think Birmingham could be a winner but again it, you've got to be careful because you don't want to saturate yourself. So if you just does two at Birmingham and two at Doncaster a year that's four that's four events as long as they're, they're sandwiched in between each other all good and Birmingham for, for Rob and me is 45 minutes away So I say, all in all, I thought it was a great day. Obviously, for some of the other lads, um, probably didn't do as well as they probably hoped. Um, but it's just horses for courses, and, and say the buy-in public, it's hard to gauge what's going to do well, and it, you just drop looking. Sometimes you don't. Uh, but I did pick up some of the shit because that's what we're all here for. You don't want to hear me ruffle about it. But what I will say is, um, you know, in terms of moving forward, and again, I don't know when the next one's going to be. But it's definitely worth considering getting there because where it's located in terms of like transportation links, it's a lot more convenient than Doncaster. You know, if you're going to Doncaster Dome, you are just going to Doncaster Dome for the market because you're going to have to drive. But where Birmingham, where the Birmingham market was, and if it's at the custard factory, there's literally the coach station across the road, and I think it's it's not New Street. What's the other one called? Uh, the other train stop. Uh, Retro Bear mentioned it. Russ. And it's literally like a five minute walk or it's, it's it's a ten minute walk from the ball ring so from 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 new street so the links there are absolutely superb you know if i was going there as a buyer i would probably just get on the train to be honest um so yeah i mean a great oh, that's it i should have mentioned russ um retro bear met, met russ for the first time retro bear nice to see him um he was all i mean to be fair he didn't have his coat on and I don't think he needed it. I think he had to go out and have a drink. I think Rob gave him a Sprite. But lovely to see Russ. Um, I don't think there's anybody else new. I'm gonna f I see Nick uh, from Retro Break. Nice to see Nick again. Um, he got some nice Game Boy stuff. I just watched his video. All the usual faces. Jay Cyber Snake. You know, you had um, Craig's here again. I mentioned Craig because Craig gets mentioned every fucking five minutes now. Even though he doesn't make any videos anymore. Um, he should make videos. Rob should make videos. Rob should definitely make videos. Uh, but Jay had a really good day. Um, really good day. Uh, oh God, maybe somebody else, and they're gonna like hate me for. Because I, th I didn't think I was gonna write anything down, but Dane Stud and Liam, they were there. Local lads. Uh, <laughs> I think that's enough. It's getting, it's getting really hot in here now. Fucking <laughs> 38 over 39 degrees. Mm. What did we buy? What did you waste? I'll tell you who was there. Fucking, I mentioned him earlier, didn't I? I met for the first time. Paul Mad Murdoch. Oh, two ovens. Mr. Briefcase. Come all the way down from Lon uh, London. All the way down from Scotland, Aberdeen way. Um, never met Paul before. I'd sort of said to him, uh, you know, in, in the Ram chat, I said, look, you can come along, you can help me, help me unload and help me load up. Um, you know, give us a hand, like, spare pair of vans. But he come down on his own. And I think he had a good day. He, well, he seemed like he had a good day. He seemed like he enjoyed himself. Really pleasant, quiet guy. Um, not at all like fucking Dave, old Long Shanks, fucking Jameson. Um, but then again, Dave's quietly spoken as well. Maybe it's just me, I'm a bit of a big gobshite. God knows what the pair of them would be like if they were in the room together, because I'm pretty sure they spoke softly and quietly for us poor English people to understand them. But obviously Paul's an absolute fucking diamond, really nice guy, because 
I just realised I've just seen something here. Um, and he was bagging up, man. He kept coming back to the store. I said, look, stick stick it behind here. We'll look after it. You know, Rob, he robbed me fucking pen and he robbed two bags for life. And he, fucking Scottish people don't pay for fucking anything. No, I'm joking. But uh, I say, he looked, he's, from all accounts, from what he said, unless he's lying, he had a cracking day and hopefully we'll see him back again. Paul has probably one of the most, I wouldn't say exotic, but one of the most interesting jobs I've ever spoke to anybody about. Um, <clears throat> so if you ever get the chance to meet Paul, have a chat with him. Really interesting chat. But nice with it too. I mean, eight, eight, 800 pound fucking Hugo Boss jacket, was it? Something like that he had on. Money to burn. That's why we call him two ovens. He's got, he's got two ovens, two helicopters, and everything's in his briefcase. But um, yeah, it definitely made Andy Brown's day. That's all I say. That old uh, console passion. So anyway, what did I get? So from I can't remember what this chap's name is. I've seen him at Doncaster a few times. Um, he has some really good prices on items. I remember at Doncaster, a couple of couple of Doncasters back, I was phoning Mark Burnt Up Culture saying, look, there's some Mega Drive games here that you need that are really good prices. It was this chap, I think Lewis had bought the uh, Sam Adi Amigo off of him for 100 quid and made 70 quid on it. So really good prices and stuff. I'd seen some of these in another store and they were boxed. Um, and he wanted like 10 quid, 12 quid. I think the, the lowest price one was like seven quid, but the box was a bit better. It was Matt Mania. And I was sort of semi tempted. Um, and then by the end of the day, I just thought, you know, I'm here to make money. But again, it's probably like about three o'clock, half three, as it started winding down. I walked past this chap stall and he had these on the top. <clears throat> and again, this is a weird thing because probably in Doncaster, these would have gone. But because I say the maturity of the people that are buying stuff, they were still there. Uh, and I asked, asked his mate <coughs> how much they were, and he said, oh, whatever his name is, Giles, has disappeared. And then he, he popped over and said, oh, yes, <coughs> a couple of games. I said, how much are you? He goes, you can have the lot for 15 quid. And I didn't need the lot. But I said, well, how about these three? He goes, six quid. And they weren't going to haggle. I thought, six quid's fine. Give them a load of pound coins. Uh, and the, the Atari 7800, so speaking to Paul, Mr. Bads, um, you know, we sort of chat about the 2600 and the 7800 to say there's a store that had some of these boxed, um, some still sealed. Um, you know, it, on another day I probably would have bought some of them. But for £2 each, <clears throat> we've got Alien Brigade. I have no idea what it's like. My voice is going now. <coughs> Planet Smashers, which probably looks like an Arkanoid clone. <coughs> Why is my voice going? And. He definitely had this one box because when I looked at the back of it, I said, is that Nebulous or Castilian? He went, yeah, it's exactly what it is. And it's called Tower Toppler. So, two quid, man. So Jay, see, old Mr. Jay Cybersnake, he, he very kindly gifted me a 7800 ages ago. Still got it. I told you I'd still be buying stuff for it, mate. Shit comes in here, it does not leave. They need a, dab, need a good fucking clean, but nice to have. Right, talking to Jay, segue nicely. <clears throat> Mr. Cyber Snake, Mr. Big Spender, <clears throat> Mr. Big Earner. Um, speak to Crazy here again before the event. And he said, oh, Jay might have some stuff you're interested in. And I know what he was on about. But the stuff that, because I think Jay then posted it in one of the groups. He might have sent me... The pictures, I can't remember now. And I think he was surprised that I had asked for this. Because I think he was thought I was going to ask for the other thing that he'd sold literally in 10 minutes. Watch Jay's video. And he's doing me a great makes rates on this as well. Um, this was only released in the US on the Tengen label and in Japan. And you know what, and I prefer the Japanese box art and stuff. And it is Rolling Thunder. For the Super Famicom, uh, for the Famicom, or the NES, or the NES. 
to the Namco or Namcot, depending on how you want to look at it, arcade version. I love these little boxes. Look at that. Look it. Never get played. Um, absolutely wonderful. All the bump. The old destructions. But, uh, I see he had this. <clears throat> God, my voice. And uh, I was like, yeah, I've got to have that. I have to have that. So I paid him before. <laughs> I think he was expecting me to say something like, oh, Jay, yeah, I'll have that off, yeah, and then when I make some money, I'll come around and see. I was like, no, I'll pay for you the money straight away. Boom. I'm having that fuck up. That is not going anywhere other than on my dusty shelf, <clears throat> along with the rest of my toenail clippings and dead skin. <clears throat> awesome. Awesome. Because obviously Rolling Thunder only ever came out on the NES. You know, Rolling Thunder 2 on the, on the Mega Drive. Is there a sharp 68,000? If so, it's probably about fucking 10 grand anyway, so you wouldn't want to buy that. Right. And the last couple of off the man, the man, the myth, the legend, the banana box king who keeps getting mentioned in every hockey video. I'm glad to tell you there's no bloody markets for the rest of the summer. I can stop talking about Craig's here again. Fucking hell. Frightening. It's frightening. It scares me. Um, God. So Craig, was, Craig wasn't going to stand. I think I spoke about Doncaster. <clears throat> I said to her, I said, I'll, I'll, you come into Birmingham next week, you know, even if you just come for, for the mooch around. He's like, oh, I don't know. He goes, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, he goes, I'm tempted to have a table. I said, well, get a table then. You know, I said, you need to be quick though, because I think it's, it's probably going to sell out. And obviously, it did sell out in terms of vendor space. Um, so, we had a table, which, if you've ever seen Craig's set up at Doncaster, pff, I mean, a table he. <laughs> I don't know how he managed to do it, but he got a really good little display going. But it was fucking filtered the rafters. <clears throat> it really was ram jammed. Um, and um, but he was in the little hall. He was in the hall opposite Dana. Um, so I popped over and seen him. He was settled before. Was he set? No, he wasn't set before with us. No, we got, all got there at the same time. There's a bit. Of, I don't want to go into it anyway. But there was delay, so we all should have been settled before we should have been. Um, but because obviously it was me, Pete and Rob, I took a little bit longer. Craig was already sort of set up. By the time I'd set up <coughs> and finished, when I see Craig, he was all done and dusted. And uh, I was nosing around and he had a few new bits. So they all say to me, what have you added new? Have you added anything? Have you brought anything new? And so it's only one or two things. Um, but he had a game that was still there from Doncaster, which I thought I had and I hadn't. Um, So, I was like, I've got to buy that. So, if you've still got this game in there, and you go, oh, I don't know. Flick Fruit is there. He bought another game. I was like, I ain't buying that. He said, I know that shit. You told me that shit. But he had this other item here. I said, I'm having that fucker straight away. He goes, oh, it's a little bit scratched. He goes, I said, I don't care. I'm having it. So, I'll do this. So, this is a weird thing because obviously, Paul uh, Mad Murdoch, Paul Murdoch. He was here, there, and everywhere. He was loving himself. He was in his element, and he, he kept bringing back bags of bags of games to store beyond the thing. I said, "Yeah, it's not a problem." And then towards the end, he come back and he, and he give us a bag, and he went, "Oh, and that's for you." And he handed me this. I was like, "What do you mean it's for me?" He goes, "Oh, like you know, for sort of making me feel so welcome, and you know, sort of getting me early access and this, that, and the other." I was like, "Make you don't have to fucking do that at all." And he was like, no, no, take it, honestly. And I was like, did Craig make you buy this knowing what we'd, what we'd discussed before? And he laughed. Um, and Paul, the, the mad bastard, I, I really appreciate this, mate, honestly. Absolute fucking legend. You didn't have to give me anything. You know, I'm not like that. I'd, I'd, I'd do anything for anybody. If I, if I can help somebody out, I will. Um, but I'm glad he bought it off Craig, actually, because he put a bit, bit more um, shrapnel in Craig's fucking deep pocket. It's Golden Axe. For the mighty PC Engine. Now you might think, oh my god, on the PC Engine, that must be absolutely fucking insane on the CD, on the Super CD. It's on the Super CD, it's on the CD ROM. Um, you know, given how, how good the Mega Drive version is, but apparently it's absolute pants. Now, Craig's selling point on this is it's got cutscenes. <laughs> fucking salesman, that lad. Um, it's all Craig, I don't need to, Craig's just absolutely 
immaculate condition. Um, but by all accounts, it is not very good. And I'm, honestly, look at them screenshots there. I don't you know that who did that reprogram by Telenet. I'm fucking shooting. Telenet. <laughs> Renovation game. Um, but yeah, Paul got me this. I've, I don't know if it's a joke or if it was an honest sort of whatever, but either way, I don't care. It's wonderful to add another. Any fucking PC Engine games, welcome. Um, but it just made me laugh it was that one that <laughs> he bought. I couldn't imagine Craig saying, that's great, it's got cutscenes, everything. He'll love it. Not that I'll ever play it. Anyway, back to Craig. So the item, the game, we'll stick with the games. It's the game that I saw, that I saw at Doncaster. And I thought, I've said this before, Dave Burstall, I think he's the same as me. There's a certain group of games, I don't know what it is about them, I have to buy them on every fucking thing, every single fucking system I've got. But regardless, Bubble Bobble, fucking Rainbow Islands, yada yada yada. And this one, New Zealand Story. That fucking Kiwi, and I, it's all back to the Amiga, I mean, who was I watching? Lee. Um, you've been gamed and he was on about he did he's going through his mega drive Japanese mega drive stuff I put Lee down but he, go and watch Lee because I tell you what his stories and I like it when people got actually I've got no nostalgia for the PC Engine version of uh, his story but he has for the mega drive stuff <clears throat> and he was sort of saying about like what was Italian 90 he goes it's the only football game I had he said all my mates had Amigas they had kick off two and sent soccer he goes I had Italian 90 he goes, I had to enjoy it I had to be good at it I had to try and sell it good points um, and I remember that with the Amiga in the early days I mean I didn't have an Amiga my mate John did I just lived around John's house uh, but he had the backpack and obviously that's what New Zealand Story come with that and we played New Zealand Story to death because it's the only games you had before he got friends with, with, with Roy from the computer club got all the copies then but it, never a true word had been spoken um, so for me all these New Zealand stories I think I've bought every, every iteration that Craig's ever sold from the, the the sort of Mega Drive and stuff. I've bought all of Craig's fucking New Zealand stories, um, uh, you know, uh, different versions. But it's all to do with just that Amiga game. That's all it is. I, I want the PC Engine Batman. Not because I've even played the PC Engine Batman game. I think it's alright, it's a maze one. Nothing to do with the Amiga one. But because it's Batman and I associate Batman with the Amiga, with the Amiga game. It's just how it is. But anyway. I digress. <clears throat> New Zealand story on the PC Engine. Um, I think it, uh, when I looked at the PC Engine Bible, I think I mentioned this in the last vid. I think it's either a try it or a buy it now. I can't remember. I can't see how they can get New Zealand story too far wrong. What's it called on the on the uh, on the American NES? Is it, it didn't get a UK release. It's called something like Kiwi Kiwi Capers or something like that. Something weird. I can't remember what someone bought it. And when they sort of said about it, and then they said, Oh, was it my mate? Um, I'll tell you who you should go and watch. I think it was this chap. Bloody hell, Craig, these stickers. Um, back in the day, gamer. Anthony, Ant. I put a link to Back in the Day Games channel. I don't think I've ever shouted this guy out. Get this stick off because he's welded onto it. Bloody Craig. Get some easier to remove stickers. Right. So Ant, back in the day gamer, I found him from, um, do you nerd, via um, YouTuber of the month. So Ant, back in the day gamer, he's hilarious, I love him, he's an absolute fucking, he's a, he's a beast, he's a beast of a man. Um, links down below, if you go and sub him, Leave a comment saying that Tootie sent you over because I'd, I'd love him just to sort of realise um, how much he's just a funny guy. He does all these uh, what do they have over there? VGM, VGM monthly video game monthly. He buys a box of tap. Um, do you know do that as well? But the way uh, Ant does it, I'm sure it's Ant, I'm sure it's Anthony, it is Anthony. Um, he's just he's, he's, a, he's a fucking crazy bloke, but I'd love to go and have a beer with him. I mean, 
I say beer, the way that guy drinks, I probably, even I probably couldn't keep up with him. I'm a fucking lightweight now. I'm a shandy ba bastard. But my God, he cracks me up. Go and see him. Back in the day gamer. Links down below. Toot he sent you. Anyway, he picked up. I'm sure it was him that picked up Kiwi Capers. So he was talking about it. I was like, Kiwi what? And then when he showed the cover, I could see, obviously, um, what's, he, what's his bloody name? The little Kiwi. Fucking hell, Craig. Them stickers are fucking nightmare. Don't use them again, lad. Um, yeah. New Zealand story on the PC engine. Never get played. But the final, the final item, and I'll tell you what, I've been after one of these for bloody ages. I do have, I do have, um, some would probably say superior item to this, but I don't care. Craig had this on his stall. Uh, started banging on about how it's scratched, just that. And I said, I don't care. I'm not interested. Six button avenue. Or avenue six. So really only useful for Street Fighter 2, to be honest. But there's a, there are a couple of other games that utilise an extra button rather than pressing the run and stuff like that. I can't remember the off the top of my head. And I'm not really that overly fussed. Because this is it actually is a really nice pad as well. Um, a bit dusty. <sighs> Get that bloody stupid sticker off. It comes off of this one all right. Just on them cases, it just wowed itself to it. I can see what he's saying. It just needs a clean. The Avenue 6. Look at that. Look at it. Oh. Auto fires. So I have got. I don't know if you're even fucking interested. I bought this ages ago. I can't remember where I bought this from. <sighs> this is a Hori stick. Um, what do you call it? The Hori Fighting Stick Multi. And the reason why it's multi is because it's got like a little adapter there. And what that allows you to do, you can get different cables and leads. Um, I think it's Mega Drive, PC Engine, uh, might be Super Famicom. Uh, yeah, you can plug it into anything, essentially. And it is a really nice stick. But the trouble is, it's fucking massive and bulky, whereas sometimes that is enough. You know, especially for your platforms and stuff. Arcade sticks, I don't really find that... Not that I play a great deal, let's be honest. <laughs> I'm talking complete bollocks. Um, but even with Street Fighter, I don't know if, it, if it's me, I tend to be able to, if I ever do ever play Street Fighter, it moves better with a, a pad rather than the stick, which is it, it's really counterproductive, because you should be able to play it with a stick. But that is everything, so the final piece, um, I'd say Craig, yet again, really looked after me, hooked me up, um, I think I'm buying half of Craig's collection at this rate, uh, probably not, because you wouldn't even get, I think, what did he say, something daft like, Here's 10 boxes and I've got 600 more or something. He's not selling up. He's just trimming the fat. He's cultivating his collection to, to the pinnacle of what it needs to be. Um, I'm assured by Craig some of the stuff he's buying with these funds. You know, he's not he's not just being sold off and that's it. You know, he's actually is buying stuff that he really wants. And knowing Craig, it will be something absolutely astronomical. I've told him, look, man, do some videos. Come on, give us a taster. Um, I, I think he's reluctant at the minute. I think he wants to get to a point where he's happy with it. Um, but again, you know, if you see, a bit like Mark Jow, if you see Craig's name on a floor plan for, especially Doncaster, Craig Ather, go to his stall. There's a lot to look at, and it can be quite daunting, especially at Doncaster. It's like, it's just a, a, a fucking feast for the eyes, and you don't know where to look. I mean, what's a good bloody video did I watch? Eddie! Eddie Rollercoy, he bloody bought Willy the Wombat on the Saturn, I didn't even see that there, I would have had that. So, you know, even though Craig's, and Craig's are very good at selling your stuff, um, I didn't even see it, I didn't even see it, but, you know, that's what I'm saying, there's so much to look at and so much to go through, it's, it, it fucking blows your mind. But again, <clears throat> final thoughts, many thanks to Craig, many thanks to Mark Jowett for the, the, the magazine, Many thanks to Jay Cybersnake for hooking me up with um, Rolling Thunder. Um, pfft, there's nothing in the pipeline now until um, Blackpool. So if you're umming and ahhing about uh, events and stuff like that, and you're not sure, just go back, watch some of these other people's videos that came to Revival, that came to all the other events, come to Blackpool, get yourself booked up. It's, it's out of season, so it's, it, it's you know, dirt cheap, 30, odd, 30, 40 quid a night for a bed and breakfast. Come and say hello to the guys. Come and say hello to me. I'll introduce you. I'll, I'll, I'll get you fucking dancing. 
uh, you know, I'll look after you. Someone's got to look after me first, but no, honestly. We're all just a bunch of weirdos, really, and uh, everyone's welcome. As long as you're not a knobhead. If you're not a bed, you're not welcome. Right, that's it, we're done. Take it easy, YouTube, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.